What is going on guys, Alex here, and today we're taking a look at how you do star trail photography. I've been experimenting with this for the past year, and honestly I haven't found a method that works as well as the one that I'm going to show you today. So without any further ado, let's just get straight into it. The new Kingston A400 brings SSDs to everyone, boasting super fast speeds and a low price tag. Find out more in the video description or at the end of this video. So yeah, today we're taking a look at how you do style trail photography just like this or like this one. Those are the two shots that I've done in the past week. It is a very time consuming thing to do, but honestly, out of all the methods that I've tried, this is the only one that works and delivers a good result. I've tried things like 30 second or 60 second exposures, all the way up to 20 minute or longer exposures, and honestly, none of them work as well as I'd want them to, because they either lack detail, they're either overexposed or underexposed, or they just don't look good enough to post anywhere. This method doesn't give you an image straight out of the camera that you can just go and share straight away. It does require Photoshop or another compositing software Software, but honestly, it is definitely worth the work. So before I get into what we actually need to do for this, let's start with the gear that you're going to need. So I've actually done it with two lenses. I've done it with the 25mm f1.7 and with the 12 to 60mm lens at 12mm. Honestly, I have to say the result from the 12 to 60mm lens at 12mm is much better than the 25, just because there's more stars in it and it just looks a lot better. So honestly, the wider the lens, the better the image is going to look, but bear in mind the aperture or the f-stop. So obviously when I was using the 25mm, that's at f1.7 and I had it wide open, but with this it's f3.5, so you have to adjust your settings accordingly. On the camera side, all you basically need is a camera with time-lapse functionality where you can set the amount of photos that it's going to take and the interval between them. It's also going to need to have a 100% manual mode where you can change things like the ISO, exposure compensation and the white balance because you don't want any of those changing throughout the shoot. And finally all we're going to need is a tripod and a battery that lasts a decent amount of time between two and three hours. So to start I put my camera in manual mode and I then use the following settings. So I had the lens at f3.5 so that's wide open at 12 millimeters. I had a 13 second long exposure which with noise reduction actually worked at about 22 seconds or 23 seconds. My ISO was at 400 and I set the white balance to a customer which I don't really remember but honestly the best way to just judge your settings is to just do a couple of test shots and then see what you get in the end so as soon as you have your exposure right I set up my camera to do one shot every 24 seconds and then I just set it to do 400 shots and I just let it go so it was in time-lapse mode just taking 400 photos one every 24 seconds and the main issue that I had when I was shooting was the fact that I left all my camera gear inside before the shoot so I literally took it out straight away and I just set it up and it was going what I should have done was left it outside an hour or so before so the temperature is the same same because it caused the lens to actually mist up and then ruined half the shots that I have so I only have 140 ish shots that are usable because the rest of them where the mist got on the lens are just blurry and there's literally no image to them. So yeah, the easiest way to combat that is to just leave your gear outside about an hour before you start. Okay, so once the time lapse was finished, you'll have a couple of hundred photos that'll just basically be little dots in the sky. And now comes the part where we make these little dots into one continuous line that we've already shot. So this is actually pretty easy. All you need to do is take all your photos, put them in Photoshop, select them all and just use the blending mode lighten and then pretty much the whole shot is done. As of that point then you can select them all, flatten the image and then you can just do all your adjustments as you would with a normal image. Now in the past when I tried this for the first time which you can see on my Instagram, it's from a couple of months ago now, the issue that I had with that image was the timer that I set was a minute between each shot and between that minute then you have dots of light because in the blank space where the camera isn't taking a photo the stars are still moving so it's like photo there, blank space, photo there, blank space, photo there and that meant that the image wasn't exactly lines of star trails it was more dots of star trails which obviously didn't look really good so I would not recommend using anything over 35 seconds as an interval. If you want to download the images that I've created here with my own custom logo on them just like this you can either see that card up in that top corner or go to the description and actually download them as of there. So thank you guys for watching and I will catch you in my next video. The new Kingston A400 SSDs bring SSDs to everyone, boasting great looks that match any PC build, insane performance when compared to traditional hard drives whilst keeping the price low. For more information, check the link in the video description below.